Welcome to News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss. Here now the news for November 13th, 2021. Uh, the reason there's no video today, I'm on the road. I'm out in uh, California covering all the uh, holiday Christmas festivities at the Disneyland Resort. But let's get to it. Reportedly, the actors who will portray Santa Claus during this year's holiday season at Walt Disney World will be culturally diverse for the first time. So far, Santa Claus has only been played by white or white-passing men at Walt Disney World. Including a Santa of a different race would be the latest move by Disney to promote diversity and inclusivity. Santa has already appeared at the Magic Kingdom, played by a white man, during the first two Disney Very Merriest After Hours events. He has his own Liberty Square sighting location and appears in Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas Time Parade. Santa will be appearing in more Walt Disney World locations as well uh, here at the Disneyland Resort. Walt Disney World cast members were given the opportunity to meet Santa before he greets guests in upcoming sightings at Disney Parks. There he is, Black Santa, coming to Disney Parks, probably, probably long overdue. Christmas time is here. That means decorations are all throughout Walt Disney World. In the Magic Kingdom, the classic Mickey's Christmas Carol dioramas have returned to the windows of the Emporium on Main Street, USA. These six dioramas tell the story of the 1983 uh, Christmas Carol film, an adaptation of the novel by Charles Dickens featuring classic Disney characters as Mickey portrays Bob Cratchit, Scrooge McDuck as Scrooge, Ebenezer Scrooge, that is. Each window has, of course, a book with a snippet of dialogue and the scene in the window. Figures of the scenes all move slightly. These are old school Disney offerings for sure. Last year, Cinderella Castle's holiday transformation was accomplished through projections rather than the hanging of the castle dream lights. Several of these projections have returned this year, now interspersed with the Beacon of Magic show. The first projection we saw is reminiscent of a Christmas sweater featuring knitted patterns of snowmen, trees, and holly. The second transformed the castle into an extra whimsical Christmas castle with overtones of red and green, polka dots galore, and plenty of wrapping paper. And the final transformation is closest to the beacons of magic colors, with blue and gold taking the center stage along with some of the Christmas light patterns to create a regal 50th anniversary look. The halls are decked, the cookies are baked, and you know what that means. Santa is coming to Disney's Hollywood Studios. Santa's merry motorcade cruised through the park, and Santa uh, was visiting the streets in a sleek red convertible decked out with green and gold embellishments, including an S on the hood and the door. Candy canes and mistletoe complete the look. You can watch our full video of Santa's merry motorcade right here on the channel. After its absence last year, the Merry Menagerie has returned to Disney's Animal Kingdom for the holiday season. My personal favorite. Love it. This delightful experience features multiple life-size artisan sculpted puppets brought to life by their performers as they create a playful atmosphere of festive fun. Of course, you can watch some of our interactions right here on our YouTube channel. I can't wait. Can't wait to pet a polar bear. The Tree of Life Awakenings have been a popular fixture of Animal Kingdom since 2016, and a couple years ago they introduced special holiday versions, and those are indeed back this season. Uh, you can watch those right here on our YouTube channel. They are glorious. They're really wonderful. As of November 12th, Santa Claus is now available to meet guests at Disney Springs. However, guests will be required to join a virtual queue to meet the Christmas legend. The queue is currently listed in My Disney Experience, which guests will be able to use to join the queue. Guests must be at Disney Springs to join. The virtual queue will open at 9 a.m. and again at 4 p.m. And according to a previous announcement, guests visiting Santa at Disney Springs will get, quote, individualized time with him. Santa will be appearing at Once Upon a Toy from November 12th through December 24th, 2021. Oh boy, now Rise of the Resistance and Santa Claus virtual queue. I think Santa Claus has uh, less downtime than Rise, though. The annual Gingerbread House at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa has been completed and is now open. This year, the house is a new and updated uh, decor package for the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World, the world's most magical celebration. Usually, cast members sell treats from inside the house, but because of, you know, spacing concerns, they've set up a table outside and the window is closed. It does make me sad. There was always a charm of uh, buying the treats from inside the house, but I'm sure, you know, maybe next year. Uh, the shop will be open from 9.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily through January 1st, 2022. Uh, you can take a great big look at this gingerbread house right here on our YouTube channel. The gingerbread carousel isn't the only tasty treat at Disney's Beach Club Resort. Guests can also buy holiday snacks in the lobby and at Beach Club Marketplace. You can head on over to our website to check them all out. 
According to CEO of the Walt Disney Company, Bob Chapek, during the earnings call last week, the response to the newly launched Disney Genie service during its first month has been extremely positive. Chapek says the majority of users have said it improved their experience and that almost one-third of guests have upgraded to Genie+. Plus. A paid add-on to the standard Genie service, of course, that offers the opportunity to reserve arrival times at select attractions, costing $15 per guest per day. Disney also said during the call that compared to pre-pandemic 2019 numbers, per capita guest spending at the Walt Disney World Resort had increased by 30% in the fourth quarter of 2021. Worldwide, Disney Parks revenue nearly doubled this quarter as well. It is worth noting, though, that that division is combined with consumer products, so some of those numbers are consumer products as well, so it's unclear really, truly, if things are getting that much better. There are still lots of losses in lots of different resorts around the world. In August, the new Magic Key program began at the Disneyland Resort, replacing the former annual pass holder program. In the Q4 earnings call, Bob Chapek revealed that while the new Magic Key passes had been popular with legacy pass holders, 40% of all sales are to new pass holders. It's as if you, you know, you scared off a bunch of people who used to give you money. Chapek also noted that the program is selling well, with the top two tiers, the Believe Key and the Dream Key, being the best sellers. The Dream Key, of course, sold out last month and is currently unavailable. As are park reservations in most cases. I'm lucky I got in for these five days. During the call, Christine McCarthy, the chief financial officer of the Walt Disney Company, commented that, quote, we can cut portion size, which is probably good for some people's waistlines as one of the possible measures to increase profits in the parks and resorts. Quote, we aren't going to just straight across increase prices. We're going to try to get the algorithm right to cut where we can and not necessarily do things the same way. This might be one of the most offensive things I've ever heard someone in this company say. And I mean, in the last 18 months, I feel like we have been verbally beaten down by these nasty executives, right? Uh, I remember Chapek said, uh, you know, we were less valuable as pass holders, things like that. And this is the meanest where they're just saying that some resort guests are overweight and can can uh, do with a little less food. This is, uh, yeah. I don't know. Have you been to a food and wine festival, McCarthy? The portions are pretty small already, and they're more expensive than most counter service meals. So I don't know. Maybe you guys should visit your own parks. Might help. According to the new fourth quarter and fiscal year report from the Walt Disney Company, it invested less in its theme parks in 2021 than in 2020. Total investment for Disney parks experiences and products dropped from 2.9 million to 2.2 million. Most of this change is accounted for by a 548 million investment drop in domestic theme parks. Investment in Disney media and entertainment distribution increased by $79 million, while investment in the corporate division increased by $109 million. The total investment in parks, resorts, and other property dropped by $444 million. The report states that capital expenditures decreased from $4 billion to $3.6 billion, driven by the temporary suspension of certain capital projects since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in fiscal 2020 at Disney parks, experiences, and products. An iridescent lounge fly mini backpack or mini backpack like the mouse is now available at Walt Disney World as part of the world's most magical celebration. The backpack marks a rise in price for lounge fly backpacks, which usually cost $74.99. This one is $110. Uh, no, they didn't cut any portion sizes out of it either, shockingly. Of course, the price will still vary from backpack to backpack depending on designs. This one, of course, um, maybe has some special processes involved in making it, which is why it's more. The new ramp that connects to the second level of the ferry boats is now in use at the Magic Kingdom dock. Gates have been added on the second floor of the ferry boats with rope blocking them off from guests during travel. These ferry boats are used to transport guests between the Magic Kingdom and the Transportation and Ticket Center. The new ramp is in between two docking stations, so it can connect to either side of the ferry boat. Upon pulling into the Magic Kingdom dock, a cast member lowers the ramp into position, then opens the gate and releases the rope. The ramp has stairs that take guests down to ground level. Right now, the second level ramp is only being used for disembarkation at the Magic Kingdom. It's not being used for boarding just yet. In honor of the 50th anniversary, a Citizen Watch has released a new watch design featuring the partner statue with an iridescent Cinderella castle. We found it in the Uptown Jewelers of the Magic Kingdom for $275. It's available in women's small and men's large. The new Coco scene in Mickey's Filler Magic at the Magic Kingdom has debuted after debuting over the summer at Disney California Adventure. 
The scene follows I Just Can't Wait to Be King from The Lion King, and Hector and Miguel are singing Un Poco Loco with Dante, Miguel's alabrije companion, appearing wearing a sorcerer's hat. Donald Duck is in fast pursuit of the hat as he desperately tries to retrieve it. And the Coco scene is in addition to the attraction. Nothing was removed or replaced to accommodate it. So the show is, in fact, longer now. You can watch the Coco scene as it appears in the new format. Of course, Mickey's Floor Magic at the Magic Kingdom presented as the attraction is supposed to be presented in that widescreen format, not the weird, condensed, altered version that runs at California Adventure and as well at Disneyland Paris. Following the complete destruction of Primeval World at Animal Kingdom, the attraction's entrance has now been demolished. Guests can get a great view of the tree line behind the demolition site now. Construction walls surround where the entrance was and part of the queue where that previously stood. Some green scrim is next to the green and white construction walls, and more permanent blue fencing has been installed. We expect the green scrim to be gone soon as well. Uh, it's unclear exactly what's going in this space. Uh, we assume they're going to do something with it. What? We, we don't know. A new ear headband by Loungefly is now available in honor of the 50th anniversary of Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. Guests can find the ears in Boutique at the resort for $39.99. Spaceship Earth was lit in blue in lieu of its traditional beacon of magic or uh, points of light uh, lighting uh, to celebrate Disney Plus Day on Friday. The iconic geodesic sphere was lit top to bottom in a dark blue similar to the Disney Plus color scheme. White lights accented on the occasion and were blue at other times. The pylons remained reddish-orange, but the fountain around was all blue. The LED band around the tap styles also remained solid blue for the evening. Disney's Hollywood Studios rolled out the blue carpet for Disney Plus Day, and one of the special offerings were rare character sightings around the park. On the lawn near the Hollywood Brown Derby, we spotted Russell, Carl, and Doug from Pixar's Up. Outside of Star Tours, Darth Vader was accompanied by a stormtrooper. Tiana dazzled in her flapper dress outside the 50s primetime cafe. Nearby the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular, we found Moana. You can watch our video of all the rare character sightings on our channel. In addition to the special sightings, there was also a special cavalcade. It stepped off led by two cast members bearing a Disney Plus Day banner. Following the banner was Tiana, then Doug and Russell not far behind. Sully from Monsters, Inc. was up next. And after that, the cavalcade was the same as the regular Mickey and Friends motorcade that occurs daily, featuring mini Goofy, Chip Dale, and of course, Mickey himself. He was followed by two more cast members with another Disney Plus Day banner. Meanwhile, out here at the Disneyland Resort, they rolled out the blue carpet as well. It was a really big blue carpet that covered the entire entrance area in front of the Main Street train station. Uh, there were special character appearances as well, which I'm sorry, Walt Disney World, but there was some cooler stuff here, including Max and Goofy in their Powerline costumes. How amazing is that? We also spotted Jane and Turk out by It's a Small World. Uh, also out there, we had Carl Fredrickson and Doug. I don't know how they were in two places at once. Don't ask me. Captain Phasma and the Stormtroopers were also on the Star Wars uh, launch bay. Captain Hook and Wendy were also out by Sleeping Beauty Castle and uh, more out here as well at Disneyland. The Magic Happens Parade ran for only two weeks at Disneyland Park before the resort closed in March of 2020 due to the pandemic. And though Disneyland Resort is back up and running, and in fact has daytime parades once again uh, with the Christmas Fantasy Parade running, they have no current plans to bring back Magic Happens. They have nothing to share at this time on the Magic Happens Parade is what was said to the Orange County Register. During the process of refilling the flume on It's a Small World on Wednesday, November 10th, flooding occurred, which has affected machinery. As a result, the attraction will remain closed for the time being. It was, of course, supposed to reopen on Thursday, November 11th, in time for the first Disney Merriest Nights event as It's a Small World Holiday, the annual overlay of the attraction. A reopening date has not been provided yet, but I am crossing my fingers that it's before I leave because It's a Small World Holiday. It's one of my favorites. I'll be very sad if I don't get to see it. If you need a convenient vessel for your hot cocoa or soda while you enjoy Disneyland, you can pick up an exclusive holiday stainless steel tumbler featuring Santa Mickey. It even comes with a convenient lanyard to keep your hands free for churros. You know, because they're good here. Mickey is on the front of the cup in a warm scarf and plaid Santa hat, and the tumbler has a sweater-esque pattern with snowflakes and trees on it. Tumbler comes with your choice of fountain beverage, coffee, or hot cocoa at time of purchase for $26.79. It is a really nice cup, though. I know it's a little expensive, but it's, it's nice. Meanwhile, the blue travel mug available features Mickey and friends enjoying some winter activities. The Disney Parks logo is displayed on a banner across the bottom, and Mickey appears in snowman form. Goofy takes a spin on some skis. 
Pluto can be spotted sporting a festive red scarf near the Christmas tree, and Tinkerbell put some finishing touches on the tree. Chip and Dale are skiing too, if rather unconventionally, and the mug features a sparkling silver Mickey-shaped lid. It's pretty cool. Uh, there's also some Disney Park icons uh, all around the cup too. You can look for like the Matterhorn and uh, some other fun stuff. It's 12, 12 29 with a beverage, coffee, or hot cocoa. Again, those are available at multiple locations across the Disneyland Resort. Disneyland Resort President Ken Patrick revealed the new costumes for Mickey and Minnie, which will debut at Disney Marius Nights. They did debut on Thursday night, in fact. The costumes are from the 1983 classic Mickey's Christmas Carol. And if that wasn't enough, these were only revealed on social. When we went to the event, we were surprised to find two other new character costumes. We had Goofy as Jacob Marley, the ghost, uh, appearing at the event, as well as Scrooge McDuck in his uh, nightgown, straight out of the film. These were amazing. This was it was an incredible event. Lots of really cool character costumes you've never seen before. Um, we also had out in Fantasyland uh, the Duke of we Weselton or Weaseltown, whatever you prefer. We had uh, Wandering Oaken. Uh, Elsa debuted her new uh, winter gown, uh, which I think is from the holiday short. A um, lot of great new costumes out there for this event. It was, it was really cool. Speaking of how cool Marius Knights was, the Muppets brought their unique style to the Omnibus as they performed Christmas carols for guests on Main Street. The Muppets take center stage in a nine-minute show performed four times a night during the hard ticket event, and they've decked out the bus with their very recognizable flair of the Muppet show with beautiful red curtains, holly garland, Christmas lights, and a few signs that are delightfully askew. Uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful offering. It is. It was worth the price of admission for us on Thursday. You can watch the full show right here on our YouTube channel. It was, again, the highlight of the event. Really fantastic. The iconic A Christmas Fantasy Parade returned to the streets of Disneyland Park as part of the extremely uh, limited event as well. That was their debut. The night, you got to see it at night. It is performing twice daily at Disneyland Park as well outside of the event. But you can watch A Christmas Fantasy uh, return also right here on our YouTube channel. Speaking of Marius Nights, there was a ton of exclusive food and beverage offerings available as well. Make sure you check out the website for reviews of several that we got to try. As well, there's a full list of the treats so you can prepare for your Marius Night if you're going to one of the four remaining nights of that event. Uh, so make sure you check that out. We also have other content from the event that will be coming soon. Some videos of some of the meet and greets and other little offerings here and there. As well, also available this season at Disneyland are some Jingle Bell Glow Cubes available in either uh, silver or gold at multiple locations. They can be added to any beverage for $5.50. Be sure to check when you mobile order to see who has them available. They light up in a multitude of colors. They also jingle. They're very, very cute. Over in Tomorrowland at Disneyland Park, we stopped by the pretzel cart for the new toffee pretzel. Cream cheese filled pretzel is sprinkled with toffee sugar and comes with chocolate marshmallow cream uh, as a dipping sauce. It's seven seventy five, and then just steps away at the churro cart, we found the pink coconut churro, which we had to try as well. That's six seventy five. Reviews of both up at DisneylandNewsToday.com. I personally got to review both of those. Bright suns and happy life day. The celebrations have begun in Black Spire Outpost at Disneyland. Starting with Oga's Cantina, the location is offering two Life Day specials, the Tarkanian Night Flower Cocktail and the Kadu Pork Belly Slider Skewer. The Night Flower is described as a refreshing blend of gin, elderflower, lime, ginger, and huckleberry, costing $18. The Kadu Pork Belly Slider Skewer is made up of pork belly between bao buns and zucchini sauce, uh, uh, excuse me, Calabrian compote and za'atar, costs $15. We then journeyed over to Katsaka's Kettle for the potato hand pie and the black sesame macaron. The potato hand pie is tikka masala spiced with mint cilantro yogurt. It comes, uh, it comes with that uh, for $6.79. The black sesame macaron is toasted macaron, passion fruit buttercream, sesame praline for $5.49. And over at Docking Bay 7 Food and Cargo are the uh, pork broth noodles. It's angel hair pasta with bok choy, mushrooms, roasted pork, and yuzu tomato compote uh, in a pesto tansu broth. Dish costs fifteen forty nine. Reviews of all these items up on our site. Spoiler alert: a majority of them were amazing. For all those kids and kids at heart, a new Happy Holidays Toy Story popcorn bucket has arrived at Disney California Adventure. Woody and Buzz are perched on a block stack, spelling out Happy Holidays. The lanyard matches with red, green, and white alphabet blocks, and Bl uh, Buzz is placing the Luxo ball atop the stack. The ball even lights up. 
Bucket can be found at carts around the park, including near Carthay Circle and on Pixar Pier for $25 and includes popcorn. And I will say this. This is a Tokyo-level popcorn bucket. I have it sitting next to me while I record, actually, and it's super cool. I love it. While Encanto, Disney's latest animated film, doesn't open in theaters until November 24th, the heroine Mirabelle of the Magical Madrigal family is already out greeting guests at California Adventure. Guests can find the heroine of the upcoming film at Paradise Gardens as part of the park's Viva Navidad festivities. The Festival of the Holidays at Disney California Adventure has begun. We're there to try everything the festival has to offer. As we speak, reviews are currently going up for all of the festival marketplaces and all the treats and snacks all around the park. Be sure to check them out uh, on our website if you're going to be heading to the event. We tried everything. For more information on these stories and more, head on over to WDWNT.com. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, The Vacationeer, the engineers of your next magical vacation. Sit back and let their team of vacation planning experts craft your family's next trip. The best part, their services are free. Hotel park tickets, dining, and more. Visit www.nt.travel for details. The Vacationeer, the official travel agency of WDWNT. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today here on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. Also, make sure to hit select all notifications so you never miss an episode of the show. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today, and have a great big beautiful tomorrow. From WDWNT, the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Park Center. Join us each week for news and discussion topics from the Disney and Universal theme parks around the world. We cover the top stories in a quick, concise, and fun format. Then our panel breaks down and debates some of the biggest issues and what they mean for us, the Parks fans. From the latest announcements to openings and delays to scandals and snacks and merchandise and more, we cover it all in 90 minutes. Join us live every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on youtube.com forward slash WDWNT or watch episodes on demand anytime or subscribe to the audio version of the show on your favorite podcast app.